Hey guys, my name is Joey Thomas, entrepreneur and small business educator with 17 hats. Welcome back. We're in part two of the top nine mistakes that we make in sales. So we're going to jump right in today with number four. Number four is that you don't differentiate from the competition. So what incentive does someone have if they come to you and you're exactly the same as everyone else? I want you to start brainstorming just what makes you unique, what makes you special, and just write down all of your strengths or your super strengths, right? That that you bring to the table that other people don't. Now, sometimes it's in your product. Sometimes it's a part of your service. A lot of times it's about what makes you, the person selling, unique, right? Or the person providing the service. So you have to understand and communicate your USP, your unique selling point or unique selling proposition. You'll hear it in many different ways. I have a whole separate video on your unique selling point. See, once I identify what makes me unique, what my unique selling point is, I want to make sure that that's all on my website. I want to make sure that's in my social media because I want to prep my clients before they come to the sales table. A lot of times I'll even put it into emails and guides that go out even before the client meets me in person. And a lot of that is automated through 17 hats. And because I'm right on top of it, as soon as they reach out to me, they're getting something from me. It's already ahead of the game because I have responded back very quickly. One of the biggest complaints that customers have is that they don't get responses back from the brands that they're trying to connect with. And so for me, it's a unique selling point that I will take really good care of them and they have a great client experience. So those automated messages, those emails, those lead questionnaires, those things that I send out very quickly because it's part of my client experience, it's part of what I've already set up, it already serves as my USP before I even say a word. So I do have an advantage there. So remember, to talk about what differentiates you or better yet show them by how you have your business set up okay the next one number five you have not identified your clients challenges and goals you are so busy talking about the product you are so busy talking about the service that you did not really dig into why this client is even here for you. You have not identified the challenges that they might have and why they need your service. The more time you spent asking questions and identifying their pain points, the better you can provide a solution. The more you know where they want to go, what they see as a relationship with you, the better you can serve them. So make sure to slow down and, and find out what their unique challenges are because every client brings something unique to the table. Some are parents, some have very busy jobs, some are older, some are younger. It doesn't matter what it is. Everybody has a unique challenge and a different set of goals. Make sure you're identifying them so that you can speak to those very specific solutions. And finally, your sales presentation is just a little too long. This happens a lot, guys. You know, attention spans are not very long, right? Attention spans, after the first five to 10 minutes, you can see them kind of getting a little fidgety, but I'm not saying that you can't re-engage them. You can. But just know the longer and longer it goes, the less interested they are. And most likely, you're not taking them where you want them to go. So one way to look at it is if you map out your sales presentation or how long it would take, make sure that at certain intervals that you're stopping to re-engage with the client. Because if you're talking too long or if you're presenting too long, they can completely disconnect. So you can re-engage by asking questions, re-engage by restating what you've heard and making sure that they know that you have been listening, right? And so when you do that, when you stop 
pause and re-engage with them, it helps with that attention span. It's almost like starting a little bit over again, right? It's not this one long drawn out sales presentation it breaks it up with some connection points. So guys, in part two of this video, we just covered number four, number five, and number six of top mistakes that we make when we sell. If you have any questions about any of these common mistakes or anything you've ever run into, use those comments and ask us questions. Connect with us, we'd love to chat. But don't forget, to subscribe to the 17 Hats channel, click like on this video and hit that notification button. I'll talk to you again soon.